Hello and onegaishimasu! Do you know where karate comes from? Let's take a look way back into the history of Okinawa to find out. I'll start out with my personal history. I began my training way back in August 2002, and I haven't stopped since. I spent 15 years training at my home dojo before I had to move to a different state. In that time, I achieved the rank of Shodan Ho in 2012, and then a year later received the full rank of Shodan or First Dan Black Belt. Unfortunately, since I've moved around a lot since then, I haven't been able to test for higher ranks, but I've had the joy of training in a lot of new techniques, which is what really matters. My sensei at my home dojo studied under Nakasone Kine sensei, who was a student of Toguchi Seikichi. Toguchi sensei was one of the senior students of Miyagi Chojun sensei, who was the founder of Goju Ryu. My sensei also studied in Mateyoshi Kobudo, a style of ancient weapons fighting that I was lucky enough to also be able to train in. There'll be an upcoming video on that, so keep an eye out for it. When I moved out of state for school, though, I had to find a new dojo. Fortunately, I was spoiled for great choices. The dojo that I eventually ended up at had a slightly different lineage than my previous dojo. My new sensei trained with Sensei Ronald Taganashi, who was a student of Peter Urban, the founder of USA Goju Karate. Sensei Urban was a student of Yamaguchi Gogen Sensei, who was himself another student of Miyagi Chojun Sensei's. But who did Miyagi Sensei learn from? He was the founder of Goju Ryu, but there must have been some karate prior to him for him to learn from, right? Okay, so no one really knows exactly when karate began, but we do know where. Okinawa, which used to be called the Ryukyu Kingdoms, is where karate first started being developed. Back a long time ago, it was known as te or di, both of which mean hand. However, this old style was not a lot like karate nowadays. Okinawa had a lot of trade with China, and one of the biggest imports that they had was Chinese Kempo. The village of Kume in Naha, in particular, was the site of a lot of Chinese ambassadors, many of whom wanted to demonstrate and teach their Kempo to the Okinawans. Patrick McCarthy, a karate historian, puts forward the theory that many of these martial artists would train together and develop new techniques in Matsuyama Koen, a park in Kume. You can still visit this park today to see where some of the greatest karate practitioners of old times developed their skills. Now, these empty-handed martial arts techniques became really popular on Okinawa, possibly as a result of Shoshin, a 17th century king on the islands, banning weapons across the kingdom. Every town had its own unique style of fighting, which was born out of necessity and out of innovation. In the 1800s, a martial artist from Naha named Higaona Kanryo traveled to the Fujian province in China. After some time there, he began to study white crane kung fu under a teacher known as Ryu Ryu Ko. Higaona sensei spent 13 years studying there, during which time he got a copy of the Bubishi, a Chinese book about martial arts that many people consider to be the foundation of many styles and the bible of karate. However, his teacher, Shifu Ryu Ryu Ko, never awarded Higaona sensei a teaching license, and it's also very likely that Higaona trained with many other teachers during his travels. Eventually, however, he returned to Naha to found Nahate, a style based on what he'd learned. Miyagi Chojun sensei began training at the age of 14, and after impressing several teachers, he began studying under Higaona sensei. He was very dedicated to his practice, and became one of Higaona sensei's best students, staying by his side until his death. After losing his teacher, Miyagi sensei traveled to China to try and find Ryu Ryu Ko's dojo, and retrace the steps of his sensei. While he was unable to find what he was looking for, he was able to learn from white crane masters, and he brought back a form called Rokishu, which later he would adapt into Tensho, one of the kata that would go on to define Goju Ryu as a style. When Miyagi sensei returned, he founded a dojo where he taught karate, but he didn't yet name his style. Later, in 1930, Miyagi sensei sent one of his students, Shinzato Jinan, to the coronation of the crown prince Hirohito to demonstrate his martial art. As the story goes, after this demonstration, Jinan was asked the name of his style. Since there wasn't one, he improvised the name Han Ko Ryu, which means half-hard style. When he returned to Miyagi sensei's dojo, he related this story to his teacher, who thought for a time before deciding on the name Goju Ryu, or hard soft style. Miyagi sensei chose this name from Article 13 of the Bubishi, which is a poem about the way of fighting, from the line describing the inherent yin yo or yin yang balance in breathing. And that's where Goju Ryu, my style of karate, comes from. 
Everyone who practices Goju can trace their lineage back to Miyagi-sensei one way or another. Oh boy, that's a lot of information. In my first draft of this script, it's just over 500 words, just on the history. Why do we go through all the trouble to learn all this stuff? Does learning history really help you learn karate? Well, a lot of senseis seem to think so. My first black belt test was four hours long, and after going through every technique, every kata, every bunkai, and every drill, as well as sparring, we finished by taking a test on both the history and the meanings of the names of various kata and techniques. So why was this important? Well, to give a full explanation, I would have to ask, what is the point of learning karate? And that's a really interesting question, one that basically every video on this channel will be exploring, but I won't even try to answer it here, because I don't want to make this a three hour long video, you don't want to watch that. So instead, I'll run through a few reasons why history might affect your training, really simply. One thing that a lot of karateka worry about is the authenticity of their style or lineage. The problem is that that kind of thing is really hard to determine. Even for just go do do, Miyagi-sensei never really named an official successor, so it's hard to tell which of his students has a lineage that's more or less authentic. Even Higao Nakanryo may have not received a teaching license, but does that mean that what he taught, or what any of Miyagi-sensei's students would go on to teach, is inherently any less effective? Well, a paper that I read while doing research for this video includes the quote, martial arts and martial artists do not in and of themselves need history. This is from the perspective of efficacy, of what's needed to actually do self-defense techniques, and, well, it's true. I can talk at length about my lineage or the history of my style, but none of that improves my technique. None of it improves, or even really affects, the embodiment of the martial art in the blocks, kicks, punches, and strikes. But learning history might still have some benefit. One thing that the karate community talks a lot about is McDojos, which is a term for some dojos that sacrifice the quality of their training for the goal of making money instead. Knowing your lineage, and knowing your school's lineage, can help you make sure that you're really getting an effective training and that your dojo isn't a McDojo. There's an ongoing debate in the online karate community about whether it's better to do a technique effectively or with historical accuracy, the way that it used to be done. Now, on one hand, some dojos can use tradition as an excuse not to update techniques, even ones that don't work, because that's how it's been done. And you can get stuck doing ineffective techniques, like holding your hand at your side uselessly. Fellow YouTuber and huge inspirational figure for me, Jesse Encamp, talks about updating bunkai, or the practical applications, to use that hand that you would usually keep in chamber as a hikite, or grabbing hand at short distances, by physically grabbing the arm or the body of your opponent and pulling them into you. You can't let tradition force yourself to train impractically. However, looking back at the history of your style can also help you to find interpretations that have been lost to history. Karate kata are notorious for having lost a lot of complex applications as part of a push to simplify and standardize the art as it became sport and as it became introduced into the Japanese school system. A lot of the history of some of these kata can reveal the actual meaning behind a lot of the abstract techniques that otherwise seem pretty ineffective. Though it's easy to forget watching someone perform shisochin or kururunfa or any kata, those forms were originally developed as practical ways of teaching and internalizing a lot of techniques in a short form, and every move has several applications behind it that can only be found in the bunkai or through historical research to uncover the original use of the technique. Now, by way of a closing remark, though, I want to talk about how tradition ought to be used. We should remember that Miyagi Chojun Sensei, as well as Funakoshi Gishin, Itosu Anko, and every other karate master came from a long and proud history of synthesizing different fighting traditions, testing to see what worked, and updating the old to make it new. Many kata have been simplified over time, and history can help us both appreciate how the art was developed, as well as uncover the more complex and effective techniques. But also, as karateka, we can't let history blind us to the long tradition of adaptation, improvement, and updating our styles. Maybe, at the end of the day, tradition and practicality don't have to be fully at odds with each other. But what do you think? Should karateka learn the history of the art? Leave your friendly comments down below, and also like this video and hit subscribe for uh, more overthinking videos about various aspects of karate. As always, you can find the sources that I used coming up with the idea for this script 
in the doobly-doo. And no matter what, whether you want to learn your history, or whether you want to just focus on practical applications, train hard and arigato gozaimashita.